Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. <laughs> And there's this older lady worshipping right in front of the platform. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The gift of faith came on me. He said, kick her in the face. <laughs> with your biker boot. I inched closer and I went like this. BAM! And just as my boot made contact with her nose, she fell into the power of God. Oh, that you would bear with me in a little folly, and indeed you do bear with me. For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. From the very beginning, Paul was expressing concern that there would be Christian naivete regarding Satan's movements in Christ's church. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. Because we Christians have believed that we had the only true faith, doctrines of demons, we have systematically persecuted other religions throughout our lifetime. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Bam! Whenever any religious group decides that they have the truth, they almost inevitably move to persecute a rival religious tradition. This is all a very cleverly crafted false narrative. We can both claim the mantle of truth in Christ and also practice what he taught us, which was to bless those who curse us. That Christian history is filled with so-called Christians who did not follow what the Bible prescribes is no excuse to then shirk away from the exclusivity of Jesus Christ. Bam! Have you ever heard the book of Proverbs quoted? That, you are, that if you spare the rod, you will spoil the child. That's been used by many a parent, including my own mother, on more than one occasion, with a very interesting definition of what it means to be human lying behind that. And if you examine the history of the Christian faith, you will discover that something that comes very close to sadomasochism has taken place inside this Christian institution. Schoolmasters throughout Western history have been well known as punishing schoolmasters who beat their students. And you need to recognize that almost all of the schools in Western civilization until very recently were church-related schools, and they were mostly taught by church people. And punishing children physically was an activity encouraged, supported by church authority. Is there no middle ground in this conversation? Can scripture not be both true yet inappropriately executed? To harshly punish a child for the slightest of infractions is obviously just abuse. However, our society today has moved so far into the camp of Mr. Spong here that we have this. No, fuck that! I told your ass! I told your ass to shut situation. <laughs> How do you feel? How are you we feeling about this? No, 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 no,
Ah, yes. The man of God, relegating authority to Freud and Jung, upholding their wisdom as higher than that of God. The only good thing that I can think of that happened after about 9-11 is that it forced us to recognize that we were being attacked by another religion that regarded us as infidels. That's exactly what we did in the Crusades. Mm -hmm. We organized invading armies. The Pope organized them. And we marched into the Holy Land and we killed Muslims indiscriminately, a lot more than 3,000. And some of those didn't even get to the Holy Land and they kept looking for infidels on the way and the only ones they could find were the Jews, so they killed them on the way. And it even got to the place in the Crusades where they began to kill those loyal to the Patriarch of Constantinople, the Orthodox tradition, because they weren't loyal to the Pope. It's that kind of tribal mentality that was so deep in the heart of Christianity. And I think it's still there and we've got to, we've got to expunge it. Notice the cunning of that old devil's tongue. He'll always come to you with a bit of truth. What's being said here is that because we have historically misapplied the Bible's teachings when it comes to the exclusivity of Christ, that we should do away with the idea altogether because it might cause problems. In the first place, in the oldest creation story, we're told that God created the man, Adam, in God's image. And then when the man was lonely, God created all the animals to be friends to the man, and none of them were quite adequate. And so God takes a rib from Adam's side and creates Eve, who is above the animals but not in the image of God. And she becomes the male companion and her role of, for existence is that she's to serve the needs of the man. And there is another creation story, but that's the oldest one. And that's the one that Paul picks up when he begins to talk about the relationship of men and women. So it enters the Christian faith. And then you have Paul saying things like, I forbid a woman to have authority over a man. Part of it is that we always conceive of God as male. And so the male becomes the image of God uh, in, the, in the great traditions of Roman Catholicism and Greek Orthodoxy. A woman cannot be a priest today. Doctrines of demons. But, but you do believe that Mary Magdalene was probably Jesus' wife? Story. I have, uh, I think that's, I'm glad Dan Brown uh, yeah, so put the, that into the gone, public arena right. so that everybody can discuss it. I said that in 1992 but it didn't get widely noticed outside the church. The relationship between Jesus and Magdalene has been repressed by the church because they were frightened of it. Uh, the virgin birth story doesn't come into the Christian faith until the ninth decade of the common era. You won't find any references to it in the writings of Paul. He wrote from 50 to 64. No reference at all in the first gospel to be written, which is Mark. Indeed, the mother of Jesus is portrayed as someone who doesn't understand Jesus at all and uh, not supportive in Mark's gospel. Uh, she thinks he's out of his mind, and so she goes to put him away in chapters three and chapter six. Well, you know, if you've had an angel appear to you and tell you your baby's gonna be born of a virgin, and when he's grown up, you think he's mentally ill, there's something sort of incongruent about those two things. Yes. But people don't realize that the virgin birth story is a late development in Christian history. I will also continue to do that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. How do you see the Bible in relation to uh, same-sex relationships? Well, in the first place, I don't know why anybody would think that a book written between 1000 BC and 135 AD is definitive on medical or scientific knowledge. Now, you wouldn't go to a doctor who didn't read a medical textbook any, early, any later than 135 AD. So the first place, we've got to get over the idea that because it's in the Bible, it's true. But even having said that, there are only nine places, there are only nine places, there are only nine places in all of the 66 books of the non-apocryphal Bible that have any slight stretch to include homosexuality. And two of them are simply a reference to the city of Sodom. And that's not really a, a condemnation. Not really a condemnation? God destroyed the city. Bam! Three of them are in Paul's corpus. And he uses the word arsenokoitis, which means a weak man or a man lying. And there are a lot of scholars today that think he was referring to temple prostitutes, though those words get translated into our Bible as sodomite and pervert, and they are thought to be homosexual references, which means there aren't but four, and they are very shaky. A good lawyer could never win a case on those four pieces. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. 
Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. There's, uh, there's the Sodom and Gomorrah story, which is really about unwelcoming attitudes. And it shows Lot giving his two virgin daughters to be gang raped by the men of Sodom. They don't appear to be homosexual at that moment. Uh, but it certainly doesn't appear to be moral. Mm -hmm. And then it winds up with the story of Lot's two daughters seducing their father after they get him drunk and becoming pregnant in an incestuous relationship. Now how anybody could use that to condemn loving relationships between gay and lesbian people is beyond my comprehension. <laughs> well first before I read the scripture, Amos chapter 6, Brother Copeland, I was flying home from a meeting and I had come out of a glorious meeting. I had just finished me and Cruffalo Dollar were preaching. Whoa! I'll be out walk on this money. Woo! 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 Howdy! Woo! Get some anointing. You put some of me up. Woo! Man. Woo! Put some money. Put some anointing on this money. You put some up here. You put. had a glorious meeting. So I was, for lack of a better way to say it, I was spiritually high. I said, people yeah. were saved, touched and blessed. Got in the plane that God so graciously gave us. We're flying home. As I was going home, the Lord real quickly, he said, Jesse, do you like your plane? Now, you know, I thought that's an odd statement. He gave, I said, well, certainly Lord. He said, do you really like it? And I thought, well, yes, Lord. He said, then he said this, so that's it? I didn't know how to handle that for me. I went, what? He said, you're going to let your faith stagnate? And when he said that, that shocked me. I went, whoa, wait. I literally unbuckled my seatbelt, my plane. I stood up. My pilots looked around and said, do you need something? I said, no, no, I'm talking to God right now. And he, just, <laughs> and he went back to flying. I said, Lord, I don't think I was letting my faith stagnate. He said, so this is all I could ever do. I said, you want, you, you're you trying to tell me something. He said, go to the book of Amos. So if you had the book of Amos, I want to read may, the scripture. May I right interrupt now. you there yes, for a second? Mm -hmm. You couldn't have done that on an airliner. No, sir. No way. Stand up and say, what'd you say, Lord? No. Okay. No. Yeah. And the guy sitting over there saying, what the hell does he think he's doing? <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that. No, no. This, this is so important. And those of you that are, that are just now coming into these things, um, in, in the first place, Jesse and, 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 and I and, and others, Keith Moore and Creflo and all of us, they, the world is in such a shape, we can't get there without this. That's right. We've got to have this. We would have, the mess that the airlines are in today, I would have to stop, I'm being very conservative, <laughs> at least 75 to 80, more like 90% of what we're doing, because you can't get there and from here. It's impossible. So we, we ha and, and this was such a good illustration, I just, mm -hmm. the, the, the Lord impressed me. That's why we're on that airplane. We can talk to oh, God. Lord we God. can, we, true. We, it, it, I'm being very conservative. Oh, come on now, dog. Come on, man. On November 29th, 2013, JMMI paid over $6,000 to Louis Vuitton. Mm -hmm. Yes. What would that be for? Well, this is for clothes concerning my TV ministry as well. Or you have to wear Louis Vuitton. Oh, it don't matter what name it is. The point is clothing are allocated to us for ministry purposes as well. What do you mean they're allocated to you? You know, in a media ministry. In a what? Media ministry. Yeah. Okay, or on the road, when I'm always traveling and using my clothes, I'm sweating through them. So I'm needing new clothes also for television ministry for the year, so. And so um, you use ministry money to buy your wardrobe? Outfit. Your it's outfit. called, it's allocated more towards uh, ministry. Uh, because you've done this, you are more cursed than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. I said kick her in the face. If I had cloven hooves and a pointed tail, would you be more convinced? 